and welcome back welcome aboard the channel i'm one of your co-hosts evan singer i got matt cermak with me what's up Ev? great to be back great to be back we're going to recap the Ryder cup but first in case you guys are new welcome aboard the channel we help frustrated golfers enjoy the ride again because if you can learn to smile through bad golf you can smile through anything okay we're a mental game show that helps anyone from a pga tour pro or has anyone on the show from a pga tour pro to a sports psychologist to a golfer like you and me and um we're going to recap the Ryder Cup here. We're going to pull out things that we thought can help you in your game, as well as discuss some of our favorite moments and what we want to see from Ryder Cups moving forward. So if you guys like this video, do us a solid hop aboard the channel, subscribe, and uh, let us know what else you want to see in the comments. But no matter what, sir, whether they're playing match play or what, what do they got to do? Just enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride, guys. We have so much to talk about, Serm. I love these. We um, we haven't done one of these in two years because normally we do major recaps. I think the yep. the Ryder Cup is in that same tier of where we recap some of the things that we thought were most interesting. That, um, But also, more importantly, we talk about the things that we think we could do. Like none of us can hit a driver like Rory McIlroy. But what does Rory do in the Ryder Cup that maybe he doesn't do in other tournaments, right? Like what are some, what did Cantlay do? Like, what are some things that we can apply to our game? And, you know, I've been sick this past week. I haven't played golf in a week. And so I'm playing uh, the castle course at St. Andrews tomorrow. So I'm excited to Not apply bad. these things we're about to talk about into my game tomorrow, just like I hope our listeners do as well. So where do you want to start? We have so much to go into. We've got, the player stories we've got the europe europeans in europe we've got the course we've got mental game takeaways where do you want to start sir well i mean i think it's just kind of i i think i think immediate reactions are good i mean let's yeah let's get let's, let's come at it this way what i'll kick it to you here what did you think first of all what do you think what was kind of maybe your prediction coming in i don't know if we really discussed predictions what was your overall feeling on how this was going to go down um and what do you think of the course yeah Good questions. So I actually was pretty shocked by how fast of a start Europe had. I, you know, I didn't, I don't think the Americans should ever be favorites in Europe. We haven't won in 30 years. I'm pretty sure I remember hearing the broadcast or golf channel or someone saying that we were the betting favorite technically, yeah. which I would never have taken, but I thought this was I th I mean, I thought for sure this was when we were going to break the 30 year drought. Like I thought our team was better on paper. Um they had a lot more young guys um and rookies. Um and I just thought our team was stacked, right? So I was pretty shocked by that. Um and equally sir, I was pretty shocked by the course. I I didn't know really much of anything yeah. about the course. You don't really think about golf when you think of Rome. <laughs> right. Same. I mean, yeah, it's the European tour. DPD tour isn't really there. I mean, have one right. event every year. So it felt yeah. very random, right? Like yeah. why are, why are they picking a course in Rome? Um, why don't they pick like a Lynx course or, or something that kind of favors the Europeans um, with more elements, you know, and things that the Europeans kind of grew up with. But the course was awesome. Yeah. It's fun. Like we were talking off air, like, and maybe we'll get into it separately. So I won't go too deep into it now. But the finish of this golf course is exactly how Ryder Cup venues should be. Anything that has match play should finish like this course did 16, drivable, par four, off the water. So much fun to watch. Like if you were there yeah. in person, like you'd be. You'd that's be on the hole, 16. That's the hole to be in. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be on 16. Um, 17 long par three, where if you miss it just a little bit, it goes all the way down the hill. So especially with the, the there's a great hole location today, too. Being yeah. left. Yeah. Yeah. And then 18 is a par five on the water. Well, and Risk the bunkers reward. are so perfectly placed too. It's like just the coolest, coolest kind of tough but fun par five. Yeah. 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 What about you? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, 
it's probably similar, Ev. I mean, like, I think you don't think the Americans really you always you don't think they're gonna lose. You always think they're just better on paper, right? It's kind of the classic right. story. <laughs> Even when the numbers and the history are the really the opposite. You know, not only have we not won on foreign soil in 30 years, we've lost we've lost 10 of the last 14. <laughs> so yeah. I was talking with a buddy before it started, and I was like, you know, I I, th- I think they, I think this is going to be really close. There's no way we're going to blow them out, but we're going to. We'll, but I think we'll pull it out. It's going to be close. Sure Can enough, I ask you this: it wasn't close. <laughs> we haven't talked about this before, and I didn't tell you I was going to ask you this question, but it just occurred to me: Do you think the captains make as big of an impact as we think? No, I mean I think not. I mean I think it's just to an extent. I do think the captains' picks are important. Yeah. I think that is because the makeup you know, of the team. Right. So I think that's really important. Um, I, I saw don't a tweet think... earlier that said, let me see if I can find it. Uh, the uh, captain's picks. Oh wait, I just had it. Here we go. Um, this is from big Randy from no laying up. He said, Zach Johnson's captain's picks went four, 12 and four on the week. Not great. Not great. <laughs> you know, um, so I think it's I think from a, from a captain's perspective, the captain's picks, then also preparation before the event. I think yeah. when they're pl- you know playing, you know, y- y- a good captain will know you know hey if if maybe a pairing that you thought was going to work is not going to work, so maybe a shift there. But when they're actually playing, no, it's just they got to do their thing. But I thought something that Azinger pointed out in the telecast. I don't know if you heard this, but. I didn't get to hear Azinger at all because I was on Sky Sports. This is the first time I've watched a Sky Sports okay. broadcast. I didn't get to hear the U.S. broadcast. Tell me. Guys, Evan's not just vacationing in Scotland. He's living in Scotland. So he is yeah, in it. He is, he is in Mr. It. Euro. And we're I'm not going to lie to you, though, sir. Bit. I woke up freaked out <laughs> because it's such a wild thing. Thought it was over. <laughs> well, no. Well, that, you, first of all. But. The time change. <laughs> yeah, but. The um, I'm in I'm in the UK, but my phone is registered in the US, so I would have needed VPN to trick my phone to saying it's based in the UK in order to download and access um European apps, but I also couldn't access my US app, so I can't stream. I can't down anything I downloaded to try and stream it. So you, I couldn't, it wouldn't you're work. You're in a bit of a jam. So I woke up morning, first morning, and I'm like, oh, and by the way, our Airbnb didn't have the channels. So I'm like, I have no way to watch this. And but then, out. thank God to our Twitter followers, uh, they said download Now TV on your laptop, not even download, go to Now TV on your laptop. And they have Sky Sports or Now TV has day passes. So I bought a day pass, which was awesome. Like, who would shout have out, thought that? Shout even out to our car train passengers on Twitter. Just yeah, telling you they really saved me. So shout I out to that. you guys. That's well, well that's good because this would be tougher to do today. Um, yeah, but here here was something. So again, so this you asked about captains. What I think, the captains picks. I think preparation before the event, and then being able to just you know tweak and react and pivot with your players as it relates to pairings. But they said that a big thing, a big part of Euros, the Euro team's prep was they did three whole simulated competitions against yeah, each other to start so, fast. So you did that. So you did hear that. I thought yeah. that was really interesting. Um, yeah, I did like that. You know, obviously. So a lot of talk about the Americans time off before the event. And, you know, if you look back a couple of years ago, they had three weeks off before, um, whistling straights at five weeks off here. And, you know, you kind of take that versus, you know, it, and we don't know if Zach Johnson was not, it, they weren't doing the same kind of prep who knows, but boy, they, sh- I mean, you, they, they got off to one of the best starts in the history of, you know, you know, their lead six and a half to one and a half was, has only been done twice in the history of the tournament before this. So it's like, yeah, I don't think anybody won the first four points. Know, you know, obviously, you know, uh, so there's always little things, you know, I think, uh, the Americans had some carry bags out there. That was a good move by Zach Johnson. Cause it's so hilly, you know, keeping mm. the caddies, keeping everybody fresh. So it's, 
you know, it, it, if you can do smart little things, you know, that kind of helps, I think, bring up the culture and can ultimately the result, you know, just getting these guys in the right frame of mind. So, um, you know, everybody was talking about the time off, but nobody really talked about why. Was there something different in the schedule? Well, the season has been over. Right. But the Ryder Cups this time of year, every two well, years. So why was it three instead of five? Yeah. What What was the difference between yeah. the last Ryder Cup and this one? Yeah, I guess I I, I, I don't know the, why it was three instead of five, uh, but makes a difference. Right. So, you know, it's 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 kind of, it's a storyline because they looked just not ready. I mean, they were getting yeah. buried in these early matches. Four and three, four and three, two and one, two and one. That was the first four. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> so um, I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on, on captains? You know, I mean, it's um, to me. You know, you, there's a couple things you can do, but it's at the end of the day, he's, you just got to make birdies. <laughs> and these guys got to go do it, right? Yeah. And, they get, and that's what they do. Well, the interesting thing about the captains is you don't have to be a rah rah guy. Like Luke Donald is not a rah rah guy, right? Yeah, Luke Donald is, is very Johnson. like Davis Johnson Love the third. Yeah, Zach Johnson isn't either, and he's you know. But I think there's a difference though with being a you know not a rah rah leader, but also uninspiring. Like Luke Donald is, I don't know what it is. He just. Every time he talked, he talked about team and he talked about family. They kept asking Luke about how he thought their players were doing. And it's so cliche because you hear, you know, NFL coaches talk like this. You hear a lot of college coaches talk like this. But every time he was asked about their performance, he, instead of answering it directly, he said, I really love how the groups come together. I really love how everybody feels like a family. How we've quote got each other's backs, right? Yeah. Every time Zach Johnson would talk, I was like almost zonking out. Like I was like, yeah. he doesn't. He seems. I don't know if he's he's like nervous. I don't know if he's like overwhelmed by this thing. I just felt very uninspired. Well, by Zach Johnson. Zach Johnson. Anybody you've talked to, spent time around him. He's kind of a kind of a nerdy kind of odd one he's never you know now and i don't think luke's ever been that you know he's just and i think what you're getting at you know are you fitting in enough with the players right because these are past generation players these guys are i mean they're still playing zach and luke but they're they're from the previous generation right and then you're you got these young guys do these young guys do you connect with them right do you I mean, they obviously the young guys respect what Zach Johnson, Luke Donald did, but you know, there's a, there's a mesh there. And, and, and Zach Johnson's never been the, a Freddie couples, you know, or, you know, some of these other past ca- Ben Crenshaw, these past captains, um, you know, so I think there's probably a little bit of an element to being a little bit of a guy's guy. And, and, and Zach's really not that. So it is uh, funny though. Like, but he's working so hard and, you know, and he's, doing a lot of good things and um but he's yeah but it's just crazy that none of the players played in the Italian Open or didn't somehow find a way to play like what, what would what the alternative have been like there's no sanctioned events the season's over so do you find well, something no, you on just, the DP it's World you, Tour it, it, it's how you practice and how you play and how, i mean you know how are you going to make the most of the prep Right. Yeah. You know, go play big. You know, if you're simulating three whole competitions for big money out there in team in team atmosphere, that's how you do it. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, it's crazy though, Avi. You look at this European team. I mean, like th- their horses are just as good or better than our horses, you know? And then, <laughs> you know, but it's interesting. You get a guy like Brian Harmon, who's really like a, a, a journeyman, consistent player in the tour, he wins a major, gets himself into his first. Ryder Cup, right? Um, that's kind of interesting. Max Homa played pretty well, you know. Yeah, newcomer. Um, I think that's going to propel Max Homa's career. I just historically not played well in majors, 
we saw this with Scheffler and Whistling Straits. They picked Scheffler, and everybody was like, I remember a little surprised by it um, because not as many people knew Scotty Scheffler when he was picked for the – I'm pretty sure he was picked for Whistling Straits. And the guy just absolutely tore it up and then went on this tear to become the number one player in the world. I'm not saying Max Holman is going to become the number one player in the world, but I'm going to say it right now. We don't talk about tour that often on the show, so I'm going to take advantage of this moment. Max Homa will win a major in 2024. Guaranteed. Wow. Look at you. Yeah. Um, not known for his major claims. performance. Not known for his major performances either. I'll say this about – so a couple of things too. That, I mean, well, since it's worth talking about, no Patrick Reed, no Dustin Johnson, no Bryson. You know, Bryson still, you know, he's been playing well lately on live, but he really hadn't been. Um, but, you know, Reed is a, you know, you know, he's, you love him when he's on the Ryder Cup team, right? You know, now I guess Taylor Gooch has been playing well on live, but whatever. And then the, the flip side for the Euros, no Poulter, no Sergio. Now those two guys are getting older. Westwood's, oh, Westwood's another one, three old ones. I don't think even forget live. They don't. But those are captain's picks. But those are the greatest Euro players ever, Sergio and Poulter, ever. The fact that they weren't there and they just dominated just shows you how good these these guys are at this golf. And the last thing I'll say here, you know, who, who did, we know who the captain is for Europe. It's Rory. I don't know who the captain is from a player perspective for America. I don't know. It used to be Justin Thomas, maybe. But he was a captain's Speed. pick. Speed, yeah. but Scheffler, you know, is absolutely a stud, but I just don't feel like we've got somebody in that locker room that is You're right. like a tiger, like a Phil. That is just they the got guy. they got Rory and Rom, and, right? And Rose. Well, as yeah, an I mean, older and the Americans got the players. It's just to me, it's a it's a, and Rose is a total veteran. I mean, we're Rory is too, and Rom's getting there, but you know what I mean? Do you, do you see what I'm saying though? Yeah. It's like Rory's the face. I don't know who the face of our American team was. And there's maybe something to that. And it may be part of our demise. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> point. You're right. There really isn't like a, like, it's a good thing. We're all young, but at the same time, like we don't have the lock. Who's the, el- who's the elf? Who's the what? Who's the alpha, right? Because yeah, there is no alpha. And it's like Brooks, you know, there's a lot of alpha personalities, right? Then you throw Cantley in there, plays the best, but, you know, never been the most popular guy in the room. It's kind of like Reed, right? Reed does great things, but not the most popular guy on the right. team. So it, it's just these funny dynamics to look into, but they tell, I think they tell a story a little bit about some of our lack of success and certainly the Europe's, I mean, so. Why don't we do this? Since you brought up Rory, since you brought up individual guys, I'm going to highlight something that really stood out for me. I tweeted it a couple days ago or yesterday that I think we can all kind of take from Rory and his performance this year's Ryder Cup because he started like he started crying again um, in his post Ryder Cup presser or post round presser today, just like he did at whistling straights, obviously for a different reason, but he talked about how it never sat right with him to um, the way he played in whistling straights. And now he earned four points for Europe this year. So what I think is interesting is when you think about how Rory plays in Ryder cups versus how Rory plays in majors right now, at least the last decade in majors, right? Rory is clearly playing for something beyond himself, right? He's playing for the guy next to him. He's playing for his teammate, his team, his country, the Ryder Cup, something bigger, right? Whereas, obviously, when he's playing in the Masters, it's an individual game. You're playing for yourself. You're playing for your legacy. You're playing for the Grand Slam. Isn't it fascinating how... So much of our struggles that we've talked about for years on this show is parallel with life in the sense that when you get me focused, poor me, that's when you get into trouble, right? That's when the ego takes over. 
That's when you get in your own way. That's when you get tentative. That's when you feel doubt. The second that you're engaging with the other people in your group, when you're playing for something else, right? When you're, when you're noticing other things other than, you know, your own game, our best seems to come out. Right. And I just think there's something in the way that Rory played this week and think about all that he's had with the tour versus live. And he admitted to that being almost too much and taking a lot out of him and throwing the Joe LaCava incident, which was just weird and stupid by Joe LaCava, you know, yeah, just very like... weird. But, but Rory I think that's fueled, fueled that with anger. Like yeah. He channeled that in his productive way. And like, and I'm going to, I'm, we're just going to go out and murder these guys tomorrow. Right. You know? Right. But like, think about it. Like, obviously you, obviously they're nervous. They all admit they don't feel nerves at, at all similar to the Ryder cup, even majors. It's a different level. So clearly it's normal to have the nerves. They want to do well. They don't like when they don't, but it's just so fascinating to me. I wonder How can we play golf more like Rory and Ryder Cups than Rory at the Masters, right? Like it's an entirely different way to play. One feels very tentative. The other feels very offensive. Do you think I'm onto something? Yeah, I mean, I think it's Rory's Ryder Cup this year, right? Because prior to this, he's just been an okay Ryder Cup player. And as we know, Tiger, just a subpar Ryder Cup player too. So this is like a really, really, I mean, I'll get, we'll get around to this here, but, but for Rory, this, this could be big Ab, because he's kind of done everything there is to do, so to speak, you know, now career grand slam would be the cherry right. on top, but right. he, he was the guy. Tiger was never the guy in a Ryder Cup. He was the guy. He's done it, right? He's won and he's won the FedEx Cup and he's won the European Tour money and he's won the majors, right? And he's won. So, like, you know, what what was different about this year? Into your the into your point, like, you know, uh, some of this all the stuff going on with Liv, you know, probably talks too much about the, you know, just how did he find a way the will to be so focused and be like such an amazing leader? Um so I mean, you know, so what is it, right? And then the last several, you know, well. Just generally in majors, he's kind of just not quite been there when you'd expect him to be. You know, I will say this, you know, I, you know, I've played, I was I played in a team event. It was a Ryder Cup, but it was a one day event and two man scramble, like two man teams, you know, 18 holes. And, um, but it's straight up, right? There's no shots because I have a, you know, member guests, you know, you've played in a bunch it's harder to compare because you're giving strokes. Like it's really, I find it's really interesting when you're playing straight up against people two on two is like, it's like this and it can be at any level, right? Two, two, five handicaps going against two, five handicaps, you know, two, you're playing straight up. Um, There's a war mentality and and Rory definitely had the war mentality, but when we were playing a couple weeks ago, me and Kevin, I mean, I'm trying to pump him up. You know, I'm an A player. He's a D player. We're going against a you know a, a B plus and a C plus, and we I'm like <laughs> we're literally sitting there I'm like we're gonna murder these guys today, like these guys have no chance. We're gonna get off to a fast start and we're not looking back. You know you don't really talk like that when you play, <laughs> you know because you're not so interested. You know in the one guy here, one guy there. It's you know you're it's like you have this task. Like when you really play well in team golf, you have this task. This is what you have to do today. You got to go beat these guys. In order to do that, you got to go beat the golf course. You beat these guys. You've done your part. And the, again, the war mentality that I think the best players have in team, in team golf. Um, it is true though. I know that my hear... best golf today is going to win. And I don't have to worry about giving shots to somebody. Yeah. When you hear really good players talk. Yeah. Um, they do all kind of say something of the nature of, I want to bury everyone I'm playing against. I want to kill them, right? Like Danny Woodhead, who we had on the show. I know you missed that one. He literally said, I want to kill everybody who I play with. And he went from a five to a plus five 
in five years, right? It's, it's like what's an fueling your athlete. purpose and your motivation, right. right? But let's talk about max play for a second because um, max play is one of two things. It's either really, really easy to press because the result is in front of you every time. Like it's it's much more finite than stroke play. Stroke play, yeah, you know the the result in, in regards to the score is in front of you, but you can't see what everybody else is doing on the course. You don't know how things will shape up. You might string together four birdies in a row and you jump up 40 spots, right? Yeah. Um, match play, you know exactly where you're at. You know exactly where your opponent is. And now it's up to you to go hit the shot, right? So really easy to press and be tentative. And well, when you say press, let's define press for people because that means different things, right? So yeah. you said press and tentative because yeah. pressing often means being just too, too aggressive, not thinking. Right. And then there's, there's, you know, and, and, and hit a dumb shot, right? Because I see pull and driver realizing, you know what, if it goes left, I'm there's, you, you only lose by one on a hole. Right. So yeah. there's that way you can easily to get over aggressive, but maybe you're getting at, Something else I think it's best. easy pressing. to get. I think pressing in this case, I would define as getting wrapped up in outcome. So instead of getting into the flow of the of the round, getting into the flow of the match, playing the course, thinking through shots, you get stuck in where is what is he at? What's my opponent at? What or do what, we need here? Or what my partner's doing? What is my partner doing? What do we need here? Do I pop here? Right. Yep. Like we've talked about in the past and member guests, like I realized, holy shit, we're talking about where we're at in the match and what we need to win this hole the whole time. Right. Where that could help some people. But yeah. I think for most, that's not how you play good golf is thinking about where your score is every single shot and what you need to come in. That's exactly what people do when they start, quote, pressing or trying to achieve a certain result. And they get in their own way. It adds tension and all that stuff. So on one hand, I see match play being challenging for a lot of people that are listening because of that. On the other hand, I think match play is the ultimate competition. So you could really lean in being a competitor in match play. Because to your point, and this is something we've told our buddy Ryan, who historically has told us he struggled in match play, but he's an amazing stroke play player. Because he gets too wrapped up in what he needs to do in the moment. But if that guy just competes and hits shots, he's such a good ball striker. He's going to be up in the match in the end in most matches, right? So I think it it's so funny. Match play seems to be the perfect platform for one of the biggest concepts we end up talking about the most on this show, which is, are you protecting? Or are you competing, right? Are you playing defense? Or are you playing offense? And Europe, you could tell Europe were like, those guys were competing, right? The second half of the Ryder Cup, the U.S. started to compete. Well, I right? mean, I, the, yeah. I mean, what do, you, what do you mean by competing? Because I feel like Americans were playing. There's a couple matches they were making birdies, but there's something about Europe that is just performing at this level. And maybe I think it's, it's more of like the mentality. Off. They're, yeah, they're thriving off this. This it's is our the, biggest. The fist this is our pumps. biggest event. This is our biggest. Like this is this is it. You know, it's the fist pumps. It's the taunting the crowd. It's the, I. It's the opposite of tentativeness. It's the opposite of um. Of having of protecting it's it's, it's being in the biggest moment, and saying, "Watch me hit this shot." Yeah, that is a a offensive competitor mentality and something Brett McCabe, sports psychologist for a few of the players that were playing in the Ryder Cup. That's been on the show five times. He always talked about like. You're not going to hit every shot great. And you might have your C game. So why don't you prompt make one promise to yourself, go out and compete no matter how hard it is you compete against yourself you compete against the course and it's i think it's just more of like this like fighter 
mentality. The people who fight the longest usually win the Ryder Cup because one thing we haven't talked about, you know how grueling that must be, sir? I find member guest matches of nine holes five and two days being grueling. These guys are playing. Now, obviously, not everybody plays both, you know, all five rounds, but 36 a day of grueling matches. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, got to be it draining. Takes, it takes a toll. Well, mentally, right? I mean, physically, sure, a little bit, but mentally, for sure. Um, yeah, you know, it's, I, I think what you, a, a takeaway from match play that you could, you know, bring into stroke play is oftentimes in a team match, you know, let's say you won the first two holes, right? And then you lost, the, you lost the third hole. Other team makes a birdie putt, like a good putt. What do you do? You look at you, you look at your partner and say, eh, all right, shrug it off, right? Like they made a great putt. What can you do? Or, you know, you get on a hole and you just you hit your first bad drive and you lost the hole. Eh, it's all right, bad drive. It's like, not affected on to the next, I'm not change. I, I know what my plan is and stroke play. Sometimes, you know, we're, you know, you're looking at the big picture and the big score and you come off a double bogey or maybe your first, you know, swing to the left, you know, you pull one to the left into the water, you get to that next hole. And it's like, Oh, am I okay? Is my, where did that come from? Do I need to start? adjusting my plan for the day, adjusting my ball striking patterns, you know? Um, and the answer is no. I mean, to the, to in general, no. Right. Where I think in a match play, you just kind of let it go. And then you're on to the next and you're just back. Let's go win this hole. You know, let's go. Um, and I think that's just, and I think the key there is for everybody listening is just, that's how you stay. You're staying present, right? All right. New hole, next shot. What are we hitting off the tee? Not, lost the hole. Who cares? It's gone. Yeah. You no, know, I didn't lose 10. I didn't lose five strokes. We, we were two down or we two up. Now we're one up. And I, and I think in stroke play, we just get really, really, you know, focused on score and bad shots get us down quicker. What do you think? Well, it's a great point because I outlined the challenges of match play, right? But the beauty of match play, to your point, is it doesn't matter if you make an eight. It doesn't matter if you hit two in the water. You move on to the next hole. It's a it's wiped clean. And right? shouldn't so, that, that be the mentality in golf? Why does it matter? Right. Why does it matter if you hit it left? Why does it matter if you hit it right? You know what shot you got to hit. Right. Do it to the best of your abilities, right? Again, right. It's, it's just, it's just you try we're trying to sum this up, but it's not, it's not that simple, but it's, it's a, it's, it's two generally two different mentalities. So are you saying, what if, are you saying that most people listening would benefit by having a match play mentality when playing stroke play? I do. I think it's, yeah. You gotta, if you can find ways to, to play it, you know, in your, your local club or in a league or with your buddies. A- absolutely. You know, and I think a fair amount of guys listening do play some form match play, right? If you play a NASA, right, you know, there's a match on the front, there's a match on the back, and there's a total. Um, but absolutely, like, I because again, more mentality and short term memory is what it really mm. brings out, you know. Mm. Um, and more that's what we need. I mean, I've told you about my good rounds memory. this year, Ev. And you pointed this out that. too. Like we've recorded some episodes and we did an episode about some of my, you know, under par rounds this year and they're like in bad weather. Right. And there like, one was a ter- pretty bad front nine. And I was like, I had to get that war mentality of like, like you like to say, finding a way to fight. Right. And that helps you. Um, and sometimes it's not maybe there on a perfect day, 80 to 80 and sunny. And it's just harder to find, right? You the, fo- the focus gets lost or the- I have these bad starts, bogey double, I'm three over after two. Like, what? I just had the best range warm-up session. It's, it's just, you know, just it- so I think there's, uh, there's you something You know what I think you know? this is like? This is such a great point, sir. What it makes me think of, it's kind of like you're walking into the ring 
I think what's his name said something to us like this years ago. What is his name? Seven time world champion fighter. Oh, could have been Mai Mai Tai or, or uh, yeah, and Mai Tai uh, that we I'm, had I'm on. For, yeah, I'm forgetting his name. Um, from Brazil, he'll come. Yeah, he'll we'll come to, to us. He's we'll great. Have to look at. It. Um, anyways, I think what you're describing is kind of like walking into the ring and being a little bit scared to get hit, like not wanting to take that big hit, right? But what happens after you get hit once? Your instincts pop on. Everybody's had that second gear or that second wind where you start a workout or a fight or something where you don't want to like have the workout be too hard. But then once you get into the workout and it's fight or flight and survival mode comes in, you're like, all right, fine, let's fucking go, right? right? It wakes you up and you're like, all right, let's fucking go. And I think what you're saying is too many of us play golf like the guy in the ring that doesn't want to get hit instead of the guy in the ring that knows he's going to get hit and says, I'm going to do my best to, to drop you too. Right. Totally. Right. And, and, or, or right. Either you're going to get, hit, you're going to make, make, you're going to make a double on the second hole or the guys you're going against go birdie birdie right at, you know, right out of the gate. Right. Are you going to let that define you? Right. Or are you going to punch back? And when you let it define you or you define maybe your day, oh my God, I'm hitting it left. Man, my swing's just, it's just not there. It's, you know, put the drive, you know, put the driver away or start talking to yourself negatively. Or you just say, well, it's third day. Man, they're already making birdies, right? Because it's easy to get in that trap. How many times do you have through matches people lose? Those guys just made every putt today. There's nothing we can do. Well, it's like, well, that's how it works. Like, right. like, 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 well, yeah. I mean, like, so they, they were, they were good. You weren't as good, like, but it's like, we just ran into the buzzsaw, you know, it's like, well, yeah, that's, that's what we got to do to win these things. Like, yeah. You yeah. Know? But, but it's easy. This is what's here's, this is interesting. Cause you know, this from playing so many member guests. It's when you see a couple of birdies against the guys you're going against earlier, you're like, shit, like, Right. These fucking guys, like, you know, right? And you, right. What do you want them to do shit it, the bed? Caught up in it, like, man, it it's, you? Just, it's just their day, and it's not mine, right? It's not ours. Yeah. yeah. And that's a, and that's again, you let it, you let it define you, and that's yeah. The best, the best, don't let it define you. Now, it may end up when you count it up at eighteen holes, they may beat you two and one, but it may, they beat you two and one instead of five and four because you said no, no, I can take the hits. I got good golf in me. So, right. It's kind of like what I've some stories. I started watching Breakpoint um, recently, the tennis documentary, kind of like the full swing for tennis. Oh, yeah. I, I saw um, it advertised because I've gotten into tennis, as you know. And they're talking about how Rafa, Rafael Nadal has more comeback wins than like anyone ever. And when you think about it, it's so true. Like how easy is it if you're playing tennis or anything to just like you, you lose the first set or you've lost the first five games and you're like, oh, I'll just get them in the next set. Right. Or I'm down 40 love. I'll just get him in the next game. Conserve, right? Let's conserve your, my energy. Right. Even. Let's conserve yeah. my energy. But Rafael Nadal is like, oh, fuck that. I'm fighting for every single point, every single time. And that's a mental choice. That's what's crazy. People don't yeah. think that's mental. People just think he's a freak. But no, that's a mental decision. That's serious mental training. Yeah. Too. Like some people think that they can't, they don't have the stamina for that. It's but like over body work. Tiger, years and years. Tigers ago. talk like this, doesn't care. He fights and claws for every single shot, every single round. And I really think that's what the Ryder Cup teaches us. Totally. I didn't expect us to go here. This is great. <laughs> I thought we were going to be talking about max play or stroke play, which we did a little bit. But it's really like the Ryder Cup well, fighter mentality. And I, I don't want to like pat ourselves on the back, but I will <laughs> right now, sir. I think right now we are being – my wife is – Tara's laughing at me right there. Our Airbnb is so People, small. Tara's in the room while I'm recording. 
He's laughing right now, eating ice cream on the couch in Scotland. Oh. It's late, 9 p.m. But I think right now we are being more inspiring and firing people up more than Zach Johnson ever was. Oh. And I think oh. the he USA team Iowa, needed this you know. podcast. Um, yeah, right. We're going to have to send this. We're going to send the audio around. Yeah. Um, but but back to what's so cool about, you know, the Ryder Cup. You see these guys, you know, again, you get a little emotion, certainly in regular tournaments, but all these guys that are fist pumping and high fiving and just looking like football players, basketball players, baseball players celebrating like that's like, and and just this, this, this energy that just releases. I mean, the Patrick Cantley is literally a mute, right? And literally has no, no reaction of any kind of the golf course. Good for him. It works. Yeah. He was going nuts yesterday. Yeah. Now, a couple other things maybe was firing him up with the crowd, but still, like Justin Rose is one of your favorites. Rosie is so yeah. just Mr. Neutral. He that guy's he a goes killer. Crazier than anybody, you know. Guy's like, a killer. So what so why am I bringing this? so it's fun to watch as a fan, but I think that's, you know, there's something about that that we can take to back to stroke play or back to playing on our own, like get excited, get invested, you know, when, when things go well, you know, yeah. I think when Rosie made that putt on 16, that first bird, birdie putt he made, he went crazy. And then I saw him take this like little deep breath right after, cause yeah. like, then you have to find a way to come down. But I think like, man, like there's a level of fun. These guys are even having that doesn't come out naturally when yeah. they're playing on their own because it's just different. Well, you so, know what's also cool about this, sir? Find a, find a way to blend them, you know, bring it in to your everyday golf life. It's impossible to be fiery and competitive and fired up and into the shots and also be tentative. It's impossible. Right. So I think that's a great thing for us all to remember. Like, hit a great shot, obviously, curiosity over judgment. Was I, did I just make a bad swing or was I playing defense? Yeah. I was starting slow. Like I, like I usually do starting the round, start a little tentative didn't warm up. Not sure where it's going. Hard to commit. I'm playing defense. How can I play offense? How can I try and smash this ball? Right. Instead of trying not to mess up. It's a totally well, you different need, well, you state. Need, right. No, you're right. But to play up to play your best offense, I know you like to say you love to talk about the offense defense. I think it's good. Um, to play your best offense, you have to think be thinking clearly. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you have to be clear on right. what kind of offense you're playing. Right. You have to be clear and, on where you want to hit it and what you're trying to do. Right. But or, you know, if you're thinking about, you know, where you're at, you know, in the round or whatever, if that overcomes you. Poor results gonna gonna happen, right? But if you're yeah. able to, to neutralize that thought, so that's it, right? So maybe you're, you know, you mentioned Rory. Rory has maybe figured out something this week about clear thoughts, war mentality, right? Yeah, Pl- you know, <laughs> and so it's, it's 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 something else, man. I I I um. I think match play is, I think match play is really powerful. You know, I think we really see it on display and think about this, Ev. I mean, I don't want to, I know you're, you're over in the UK right now as an American trying to bring our guys home. We get smoked this week. Think about this. The Europe has won the, they won the Solheim cup and they won, they've won the junior Ryder cup. They've won this. Like there's just something about, and it's all match play. The Americans won the Walker cup, didn't they? Um, I don't know if they won it last year. This past year, it just happened. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the Americans won the Walker Cup because it was in St. Andrews. It was right before I came here. I just think we need more match play. I mean, golf started as yeah. a match play in the majors, you know. Um, yeah. So. Um, so before we sign off, I thought this was great. By the way, yeah. Before we sign off, selfishly. I have to ask you this because I'm so fascinated and blown away by Tommy Fleetwood's drive 
on 16. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's playing Ricky Fowler, right? Mm -hmm. Ricky Fowler hits it in the water. 16 drivable par four. Bunker left. Green goes out to the right by the water. Most guys are playing big cuts or hitting three woods where they either go in the bunker or they're just short on the green, right? A lot of people driving this green. I'm going to stop you for a second. Did anybody lay up all week? I don't think, I don't, I didn't see, I didn't see anybody. No, No. some people were hitting three woods. No, Well, well, yeah, because they thought that was the right club, but no, everybody was going for the green. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So let me ask you this. He is at what, what, what are they in the match at this point? Were they all square? Um, no, he, well, that was the 16th hole. He was too, well, he would, he would have been two up. Was he two right? up? We'll have to, because to get the, this. to get the, to get the point on 16. Um, yeah, he's, or he's, he, yeah, he's two up because he makes birdie. Ricky made par. He goes three up with two to play Match is over. So, well, no, he, he was two up. Yeah, no, two. he was two up with two to play because he started celebrating that Ricky gave him that putt on 17 or was it on 16? And he knew they at best Ricky could tie. So regardless, regardless of where they were at in the match, Obviously, 16 was a pivotal moment in the match. This right? is the the Ryder Cup is coming down to him. To this hole. Yeah. Ricky hits it in the water. The worst thing Tommy could do in that moment is hit it in the water. Yeah. Right? I'm shocked he hit driver. Why? I just feel like driver brings the water into play. But is your point that he could have missed the three wood right too? And the three wood well, could have gone in the water. Well, you mean miss like a, I mean, the th- well, the three woods potentially going for the green too, right? Yeah. It, you're saying why not hit a five iron and put it out in play? Yeah, like why take what? Why not take water out of play? Well, in this situation, what did Ricky do? He stuffed his wedge. He's still going to make good chance he makes par. Mm. You start laying back, then you're in a yardage of shot you haven't hit all week. And yeah, you know, so he hit a good iron shot from 100 yards. Well, okay, you hit it to nine feet. Yeah. So I think, and that's because of the trouble. Like this is the shot I'm doing. The shot call. And the if I do hit in the, the water, shot anyways. And if I do hit in the water, okay, we're we're all square. We're even, yeah. But I'm we're dropping in the same place as opposed but to maybe that's a good point of everything we just talked about. He didn't change his plan. Which right. you can say match play, you can change your plan, right? Um, you can, we've you react to what your what the your playing opponent is doing. But he said, where you're at in the "This match. is my best chance to make birdie," and he hit maybe one of the greatest yeah, drives I've ever seen in the biggest moment that I've ever seen. Right to have such control with a driver to have such control <laughs> and it took the slope, you know, to hit um, a little cut. But but it was but incredible. You, but I want to hammer this point home because he it's risk assessment. Okay, what happens if what happens if I make a bad swing goes in the water? I can still make par. That to me can be comforting in the situations, knowing the situation. Right. 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 So like okay. I make the swing I know I can make. We're going to win this thing. I don't for some reason. Still got a chance. But you see this, that and is such a great that'll point. Calm you down. That is the mindset everybody should take, right? Yeah. That is the Tommy Fleetwood premier war mentality mindset that we strive for, right? What I think most people go to is, well, Ricky's down right now. I don't want to miss the moment or falter too and bring him right back in. So I'm going to make sure I take that water out of play, but now you're kind of playing defensive. Right. When Tommy was like, now, now, now Tommy you're trying probably to probably didn't even go ego wise. He was just like, well, he can still make par. So it's I'm going to make birdie. It's the same Nothing's mentality changed. all week, whether you're trying to win the Ryder cup or it's the first time first round. Right. Take the shot I changed. want. 
I can make eagle birdie. If I don't, I still got a chance at par. Right. And why react and get down on his level and then hit a shot you haven't hit all week and then have to hit another shot you haven't hit all week. Right. Right. Um, now, if it was a different format, maybe like an alternate shot, maybe a different conversation, you know. Um, but it's pretty, right. It, it's the coolest thing to watch <laughs> these guys in the, in the most pressure packed situation you could think of to win the Ryder Cup for, for Europe and pull out a driver. And, and stick it in there like you're hitting an eight iron. <laughs> right. Incredible. <laughs> but point is, you cannot, you just can't get invested in what your the other player is doing. It might be an occasional moment or two in match play, but you know what you're supposed to do. You know the shot you're supposed to hit. You just got to get up there and do it. And maybe the perfect example, sir, before we sign off here, is yesterday. I think in four balls, you saw an exchange between Zach Johnson, which, by the way, why is our captain talking to our players about club selection? Well, he with, said he didn't tell him what club to hit. Okay. Well, anyways, he, yeah, Spieth yeah. and JT were debating what club to hit on 16. Spieth at the last second picked three wood, and he blocked it right into the water anyways. And I got a few texts like, why do you – why did he hit that? And I was like, you could tell it was such a last minute decision. He probably wasn't committed. He wasn't. Yeah. He was clearly in between yardages. I think what Zach was doing, just like giving him some information. Here's what it is here. Yeah, here's yeah. what I've seen today. Here's the clubs I've seen guys hit. And he wasn't committed to, I got to hit the, I'm going to hit the driver here. I'm going to hit the three wood here. That's that's a classic in between clubs and then throw in, <laughs> you know, trying to craft it in over water. Right. And just Jordan has been struggling with his driver all week. So, you know, right. he thought maybe could I just be more fearless ripping a three wood, but in the end, I you know, didn't, you just, you just couldn't commit to it. Right. As opposed to controlling a driver. War mentality, short term memory. Yeah. Is there anything better than that? <laughs> Might be one of your I best quotes you've ever had on, on the show. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I think it's that's that's the key to playing some really good golf, you know. Yeah, yeah. All right, this well, is fun, Ev. Yeah, too bad this our great. too bad our Yanks didn't win, but you know. Hey, but you know what? I don't. I forget if I said this at the beginning, but cheers to them to make it exciting. Yeah, today Max, was what very Max exciting Homa to did? watch. What Ma- well, can we talk, do you want to sign off on Homa on the 18th hole? What yeah. he did? Did you saw yeah, that I right? I can't believe he took a a penalty stroke, but look what he did. Incredible. Well, he's like, did you see his, his little press conference after? I mean, no, it, I didn't it, see it. It was uh, just, no, his reaction after when the interview him goes, what, what was going through your mind? You're, you're going to do it. You're going to take it on playable. And you, you realize the situation of the Ryder cup. You're trying to extend. He goes, I just listened to my caddy. My caddy told me this, this lie is, is terrible. We're going to take it on playable. We're going to drop it. You're going to hit it to 10 feet and you're going to make the putt. And that's exactly what he did. And right. So recognition of when, all right, I got a tough situation, but what is, what is my plan now? Yeah. And it's hard to do that sometimes, right? When you're taking on playable or a lot of people just tried to play it, right? Maybe I can get this close. Just get this on the green. And he's like, uh, the guts, the ego, Throw the ego away. You know what's so great a, about that? From a risk, and he's like, Fitzpatrick's going to have to do something kind of heroic. He's going to have to make a putt with a lot of pressure. We'll see what happens. You know. You know he what's did. so great about that? Yeah. And this is another great thing that Max Play teaches us. Max knew this was the, this was it, right? It's like we've talked about a shootout in a member guest. You get so hyper focused on what do I have here? What is the best decision? that gives me the best chance to win or get a good result here. It's so easy to be hyper-focused in the moment. And that's what you do. But in you a real on the bad break or no. how does this happen to me? Like, but like in a lot the of, why other rounds, yeah. And he just, in a full stroke play round, we get ahead of ourselves. We're still pissed about something we did in the past. We, the war mentality to your quote is, a war mentality of this moment 
this shot. I have to, what is the best thing I can do with this shot right now? And that's what Max Homa did. And it involved taking a drop, but what an incredible par. I, I got a, I'm battling and I, now I've got to change how I'm battling, but I'm battling just as hard, right. And just as focused. And it was, that was, that was, even though we lost, that was incredible. That was, and he said, he was like an out of body experience. He blacked out when he made that putt. Like that was so cool. So yep. maybe a little mojo for Beth page in a couple of years, you know, maybe we'll go. Rory already said we're going to win in Beth page. So I heard, <laughs> I heard maybe we should go. That could be fun. That so. could be fun. We should, we should maybe consider that. Well, anyways, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation as much as we did. Um, give us a review at Apple Podcasts and Spotify if we did add value on this conversation. Um, and give us a follow at The Par Train on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and hop aboard our, our YouTube as well. Um, and our email list at thepartrain.com. Yeah. We send an email every Monday um, giving you a little tidbit, tip, insight, or thought that we're thinking about. And uh, you also get first access to merch- merchandise drops. And we got some good stuff coming soon. So a lot, of, a lot of stuff in the works. No matter what they got in front of them, sir, no matter what the last shot ended up, no matter how much doubt or how much your hands are vibrating, walking into a shot. What do they got to do? Just enjoy the ride. With a war mentality and a short-term memory. Enjoy the ride, guys.